Hi guys and welcome back to Real. I have a almost return guest, I feel like, but it's like your first time on this podcast. Um, she's a podcaster as well. She's a model. She's an influencer. Please welcome Chelsea Vaughn. Hi guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for our second go round. I know for our second go round, but different vibes this time. And I think this is like, I've decided this is the theme of the episode. It's like your new era. Okay. And I like, I don't know. You pro- do you feel that way? Like you're in a different era, or or <laughs> is that just into a new era of my life? Or is that just me? That feels no, like no, that. I do feel like that. Actually, the energy has shifted. Something's yeah. going on. Yeah, like I feel like so much has changed since we last like actually like spoke on a podcast. Yeah. Um. Obviously, like you wait, look- this is our third time. Oh I my god! On- yeah, it is because I went on yours, right? Yes. Yeah, and I went on Hot Girl Talk. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, this is actually probably the max amount of times that I've, yeah, it is. I'm your most podcasted person. Yeah, you're my most (laughs) podcasted person. That's actually crazy. That's funny. But no, I I don't know. I feel like you're in kind of a new era and you're stepping into like a new energy. Yeah. No. Okay. I went out the other night and Uh I felt like there was a different energy around me. Really? You know when they say like, it's like a mindset shift. Like I feel Mm -hmm. like with dating. Yeah. Like I had just decided that I just want to date for funsies Mm -hmm. and like, that sounds weird, but I feel like I've never done that because I've Mm -hmm. always been very serious about dating. Yeah. Like I've always been like, okay, I'm an intentional dater. I'm looking for my husband. Yeah. I want to be in a relationship. I want a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But then I finally was just like, I, I don't really want one right now. Like I just moved into a brand new apartment by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't really want anyone in my space. Like I just dealt with all that apartment drama and like breakup and everything else. So I'm just like at a point where I'm like, I want to be by myself and chill. Yeah. And so then I go out on Saturday night and like, I guess all of these guys could smell it on me because everybody wanted to hit on me that night. And I was like, yep. Oh my God. Why is it that that always happens? Like the second you're like in a relationship or you're like unavailable, like that's what, that's when like all the guys like literally flock. Come out of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I I shifted something. Something's going on. It's interesting too. I heard someone say this the other day about like turning 30 or being in their 30s and being single and how it was so different. Like I heard someone else talking about this too. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Unless, was it you? Maybe. (laughs) I'm like, did you talk about this on your pod? TikTok. No, I don't know because I heard someone talking on a podcast about this and they were like talking about how like dating in their 20s, they put so much weight in like every single date they went on and like Mm. dating in your 30s, you almost feel like you have a more open mind about it and you can be more free about it. Yeah, I do feel like that's true, but I was in serious relationships for like a lot of my 20s. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really dated much in my 20s, but like the one thing I have noticed in my 30s is that I feel like guys are like assuming things about me as Hmm. far as like my intentions interesting like what like that I'm trying to get married and have a baby right now Mm. and I'm like I have never in my life been trying to just fuck around and find out yeah more than I am right now (laughs) and then like yeah like I went on a date with this 26 year old that I met at on St. Patrick's Day at a bar oh my god so like very unserious yeah and he texted me and he was like hey like I just wanted you to know that like I don't know where I think this might be going. So like, I don't want to waste your time if you're looking for something serious. And I was like, sir, when did I say? Yeah. Like I was trying to marry you. (laughs) True. And like, he doesn't realize too, like you're just out of a relationship as well. Like, why would you want that? I just thought it was so funny that I was like, what part of this whole interaction gave you I'm trying to get serious vibes. You know what? At least he stated his intentions because I feel like so many guys like... But also, why would he, like, why would he say that? Like, that kind of gives, like, why would you want any guy to not be serious? Like, a little bit, you know? I think it was because (laughs) I casually invited him to a movie premiere. Oh, (laughs) period. But, like. He doesn't realize, though, like, these things, this could happen any day for us. This can happen any day. It wasn't like a, like a movie premiere. Like, last night. Yeah. It was, like an AMC theater for like an like a screening like a screen okay okay and I invited him four hours before it was happening oh my god because I was like oh like I might go to this I might not right and so I was like hey any chance you want to go with like to me with me Mm -hmm. this tonight and he was like oh my god sorry like I can't like thanks so much for inviting me like I really appreciate you thinking and I was like you're thinking this is a little bit yeah yeah Yeah. and it's like not babe (laughs) yeah 26 though that's like 
it's a choice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, I just did the same thing. Like I started dating, like I went on a couple dates with like a couple different younger guys because okay. I was like, like, fuck it. Like, I feel like all of our friends are like dating younger guys and like we should try, but I, I don't know. It's still not my vibe. <laughs> Wait, how old are you now? I'm, I'm 26. Okay. So, okay. But I feel like that's different. Like, I feel like if you're dating a younger guy, like they're, that's pretty young. Right. Like they haven't. Exactly. The brain's not fully developed. Yeah. But even the 26 year old guys, because think about it, like we mature a lot faster. Right. Like the 26 year old guys, I feel like are still in their like frat era. Yeah. 26 is, as, that's as low as I would go. Like, yeah. I wouldn't, if I'm, are you on apps? Yes. Okay. I wouldn't set my thing below 27. Yeah. I met that guy in person, so I didn't know how old he was. Right, that's true. And it's yeah. different. Like, you feel out of vibe in person. But on the apps, when you're, like, actually intentionally right. putting an age, you're not going to, like, put that low of an yeah. age. I wouldn't have – yeah, we wouldn't have met had it not been at a bar. Whatever happened – I know you went on a date, like, last week. Whatever happened. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the night that I was – I need the tea. Apparently giving off, come talk to me. Okay, okay. Um, he was a bartender. Oh, my God. And – he, I didn't find this out till later on the date. Mm -hmm. Um, that I thought it was like a coincidence that I just happened to run into him by the bathroom. Uh -huh. Apparently, he went down there because he saw me go to the bathroom and he wanted to ask me out. Oh shit! And I was like, okay, that's kind of hot, but also kind of creepy. Like you stalked me to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, interesting. He did stalk you to the bathroom. He did. Um, like good for him for getting what he wanted. Like he literally said that he was like, "Oh, I got the date I wanted." And I was like, "Okay, then. that's true." Period. I was just talking about how guys don't approach. So like, come he on. Did. He approached. Good me. for him for that. He was like, "Hey," he was very polite. Like, "Hey, like I didn't get your name at the bar. I think you're really pretty. Like, would you want to go out on Tuesday?" And I was like, "Okay, damn." Period. Yeah. And then he calls me on Monday. Wow. On the phone in the middle of the afternoon, and was like, "Hey." It's so-and-so, like, just want to make sure you're still good for Tuesday. Like, where do you live so I can pick somewhere convenient for you? Wait, I kind of love him. And then he texted me the reservations. I love this man. It was cool. So we went to a rooftop bar. I'm in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's Irish. Okay. Like, from Dublin. Oh, wow. Like, has an accent. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... That's a first for me. Yeah, that, I that's crazy. <laughs> I will say he was six three. So okay, I love that. Because sometimes it like this is so mean. Like sometimes an Irish accent is like slightly off putting. No, you're right. But he's been here for like 10, 15 years. Okay, okay. So okay. it's not it's not off putting. Off -putting. Irish. <laughs> How do Irish people even talk? I can't even do like an accent. No, no, I can't. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> yeah we went out we had drinks i mean irish irishmen they can drink yeah okay? so yeah it's a tuesday night i wasn't trying to get like hammered lit right um but he's throwing them back we're at a rooftop bar like a fancy one. Oh my god 25 bucks a cocktail okay so i was like on your bartender salary yeah yeah what is he doing on the side <laughs> he like... didn't even care he was like yeah you want another one let's get another one i was like should we have four cocktails yeah right now? <laughs> on a tuesday so then he was like, oh, I know this Irish bar around here, whatever. That's funny. And at this point, you know, I'm a little tipsy. I'm right. like three drinks in. I was like, let's go. So we yeah. go to this Irish bar. It is packed. Oh, it's my God. Tuesday night. Again, Tuesday night. And um, we get there and we're sitting on stools. Every seat is filled. Mm -hmm. And I hear like something behind me, like a weird like splashing. And I was like, OK, somebody spilled a drink. I turn around. A man projectile vomit. No. On the floor. No. Right behind me. I'm like no. on a stool and it's just like splash. No. I was like, what is going on it hit here? You? I would like to think not. <laughs> I was told it wasn't on me, but oh my God. Um, I was like, this is crazy. What was his, wait, what was his reaction? He saw it happen. So oh he was like, my God. You're good. Like this guy just threw up. Just like, don't look over there. Don't look. And I was like, oh, uh, what is going on? I'm actually like, I'm 22. Yeah. So then we made out. Oh my God. <laughs> the, throw up, the throw up just like set the vibes. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had like a good first kiss in a very long time. Yeah. I feel like it's rare for me to go on a first date and like want to make out with a person. Me it too. takes a certain type of date for it, that to happen. I think the weird part is that like I was attracted to like his actions. Mm -hmm. That's so valid. But I don't think I was attracted. I was attracted to him, mm -hmm. but I didn't find him that attractive. Okay, that's no, I like get it though, because I get it. Are you the type of person that like is attracted to personality more than like, like I obviously I want a cute guy, right. obviously. Everyone does. But when I like look at someone, 
I can't like someone the other day tried to set me up with one of their friends and I was like yeah I met him he's cute but like I need to see if we vibe in order for me to like actually see if there's a connection right I mean yeah I've had attraction grow before Mm -hmm. but like I literally the interaction we had when he like approached me Mm -hmm. 30 seconds like I didn't remember what he even looked like he was Mm -hmm. working so like I wasn't even like looking at him like that yeah and then when he came up to me like on our date I was like oh yeah, okay really yeah, you I was were like, like oh, no mm, he's not that cute oh no <laughs> yeah oh no and then um I mean as the date went on obviously I got a little a little drunker so right. I really don't know if it was that or whatever it's always like the end of the date you like yeah. think they're more attractive yeah but he was also like laying it on so thick like wow. I don't know if it was like a cultural thing no I I like love that he no. was like clearly into you he set his intentions from the beginning yeah like could not wait every sentence that we talked about was like finding a way to shove a compliment in there I was like really right, oh yeah. was it too much mm, it was kind of like charming in like an Irish way <laughs> <laughs> it was charming <laughs> yeah I was like okay yeah compliment the shit out of me whatever um, oh my god well that's kind of like I like that I like that he was aggressive it's nice sometimes to just be able to go on a date where you're being actively pursued that's even what if it, it was. doesn't mm-hmm. like I've been on mul- a bunch of dates like in March I decided I was gonna go on like one date a week mm. and I just felt like everyone was treating me like this like delicate little flower that they were afraid <laughs> to touch interesting which I was like what is going on yeah am I, I don't giving like that. off that vibe <laughs> were the types of guys you were dating all similar or were they all very different no it was the 26 year old okay then it was a guy from hinge that's like a 35 year old like finance okay like serious guy uh-huh. a european guy another guy from hinge okay like, so very random all random picks yes it's interesting how they all i wonder if they were intimidated i don't know but it's like i appreciate that you guys respect me and all but like can somebody disrespect me? <laughs> yeah, that's the motto of my life, literally. <laughs> like, it just felt nice to have this random bartender, like, compliment the shit out of me and, like, make out with me and grab yeah, my ass. Yeah, like, I was literally. Like, Dude, can somebody, like, make me feel wanted? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. make me feel something. Make me feel a little tingle. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, I needed that. Yeah. Like, thank God, somebody wants me. It is very interesting. I feel like it's also maybe harder for people like us we have I mean I don't even think you have like a super strong personality like I think you're like you have a soft personality but because you're beautiful and you're tall like you have a presence about you I think people get intimidated and with me I think I have a strong personality (laughs) (laughs) I can I'm not for everyone okay well you're also beautiful (laughs) thank you (laughs) but like you know what I mean so I don't know I feel like sometimes it has an effect on guys where it's like they're afraid to yeah to touch you or to like pursue you extra like it takes a certain type of person I don't Maybe. I don't know an Irish one I guess an Irish one no, with that 26 year old I was like this is a sure thing this man's gonna make out with me we yeah. went on two dates one of them was like eight hours long like we went wow. to comedy cellar we had a drink before we had drinks after wow. we saw a sidekick oh my we god he saw a sidekick literally we hop, well like hopped around the whole west village stop that's so fun though it was such a fun date and I'm like and he just kept being like want to go somewhere else like want to go somewhere else like he didn't want to leave it's like three in the that's morning that's classic like, 26 year old behavior so are you gonna kiss me or yeah nah? and did, so he he made out with you no so he we never made out with and him? it was like an awkward like no and then he ran away I was like, okay, he's definitely scared of me. This man wouldn't even touch me. Yeah. No, and like, nothing. I've pulled one of those, but like, that's my, like, a guy <laughs> needs to like, <laughs> nothing. Try to make the move. Yeah. So what have you learned from, you went on all these dates? Like, what are some things you've learned either mm. about dating, about yourself? Um, I think, I think it was just so good for me to do that because mm-hmm. I had to kind of force myself to do that because mm-hmm. I will sit in my apartment and like be chill me too, and like not go out and be fine. Um, but I was like, I think I really need to push myself out there because like the more I go on more dates mm-hmm. and meet more different kinds of people, like the less seriously you take everything. It's like exposure therapy. Like it's yeah. like the more practice I have, the more I'm like, it's just a first date. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Cause I was definitely that person in my twenties that was like putting all this pressure on a first date when it's like, that's not how you should be. Yeah. Yeah. I've just started to kind of adapt that mindset. Yeah. But it's still a little bit difficult and it's like a learning curve. Yeah. Like I feel, I do that. Like I put, I used to put a lot of pressure. I'm starting to now I, that I go on more dates, there's less pressure, but I still find myself even after like one or two interactions with someone, could I see myself with them? Like, 
could they change in this way or in that way? Like, how could they form to my, like, I don't know. I, my like logic gets in the way so much. Yeah. I'm a very analytical person too. Yeah. So like that doesn't help. Yeah. Um, but I feel like this sounds like, it's like the cliche saying mm-hmm. of like, um, make sure you like them. Like, don't think about like, do they like me? You have to think it's about so like, true. do I like them? It's so true. But that really grounds me. Cause I'm really like, when I went on these first dates, I'm like, do I like them and do I want to see them again? Or do I just want the validation of them wanting to see me again? Yeah. And so a lot of these, I was just actually all of them. (laughs) I was like, I I really like, I had a good time, Mm -hmm. but I was like, I don't, if I never saw that person again, I'm okay. Yeah. You'd be okay. But like, we went out again. Okay. Yeah. Like it's just very much not being attached to the outcome. Yeah. And I think that's also like a, it's a life lesson too. Cause even my mom says this, like, no matter how important a person is to you, even if you are like in so deep with them in a relationship, you should still be able to be you and survive without them. Yeah. Like not everyone is forever and like things happen. So you like always have to be like that. You always yeah. have to be like, I love this person. My life is better with this person. But like, if God forbid something happens, like I know I would survive. I know I would be okay. Yeah. It's like that sureness, like the mm-hmm. sureness inside of you, the certainty that I have now, because like, I've been in love multiple times now. I've mm-hmm. been through gut wrenching heartbreaks, yeah. and so it's like I know that I'm good by myself, and that I was good before I met you. Because like currently, I am chilling alone, yeah, and having a great time. Yeah. So I'm like, I know that if it doesn't work out, I'll have to go back to what was happening before, which is me being good by myself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think there's like a different energy with that like certainty that I have, where I'm just like, I don't, I don't need you. I don't need to be here. Yeah, <laughs> literally, I don't yeah. need to be here. Yeah. Are your parents married? Like, yeah, they've been married for 30 years. Okay. They're just about to hit 30 years. Aww. Yeah. Or yours? No, my parents are very much divorced. Um, and I I just think it's interesting because I'm like how that plays into how you date and how you think about dating. Yeah. I like I talked to kid about this a mm-hmm. lot too and how there's like different perspectives. Like do you feel like it makes a difference? Like are you more cynical because of it? I don't know if cynical is the right word, but like... Yeah, maybe cynical is a bad word. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, though? Like, No, no, it definitely does affect me the way I view the world, I think, uh-huh. in general. So, like, obviously that includes dating. Yeah. So, I do think I look at it through a different lens. Mm-hmm. And I think multiple... Yeah, most of my ex-boyfriends, like, my serious relationships, mm-hmm. both their parents have been married and, like, have been married the whole time, whatever... And so, like, that's when I've seen it play out a little bit because I'm like, we think about things differently. Mm. Whereas... And maybe this is not a great thing for me, but I'm like, when I'm in a relationship, I I never think, I'm always like, this could end. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not going into it. Like, I'm not saying I'm one foot out the door, like in the relationship, like I don't want it to end. I hope it doesn't end. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, this might, we might break up. Like that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've dated people that are like, no, you stick it out. Like you stick it out no matter what. Right. And I'm like, you don't stick it out no matter what. Yeah, no, that's not also not a healthy mindset. No. And at it's like all. I saw my parents split, my mom like be independent and mm-hmm. wonderful and learn everything on her own. And yeah. like obviously I grew up with that role model. So it's mm-hmm. like I know that's yeah, I just I just know I can be on my own and be fine. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Do I want that? No, I want to be married. I want to have a great partner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do look at dating in the world differently because S- of it. Someone just posted a TikTok the other day or even yesterday, I think, and they were talking about how they can't like be friends or be surrounded by people like g- other girls that have parents that are together because like they look at the world so differently. It's true. And do you ever feel that when you're like, like even with your ex-boyfriends and stuff, like because their parents were together and you said they look at the world differently, did you ever feel like I like need to be with someone whose parents are divorced so that they could like understand me better or at least like understand kind of what I'm going through? Yeah, I do. I think you can be with someone whose parents are still together. <laughs> like, uh, of course. Yes, yes, but, yes. but I do think it would probably help. Like yeah. as far as seeing eye to eye. Yeah. Like Um, there's just like a part of it that's like you don't have to explain yourself. Yeah. It's like dating someone black for me. (laughs) Yeah. For me. No, I get it. Like it's like dating a Jew for me. It's like there's certain parts of life that 
you just you have the same background you have the same understanding you have exactly. the same values or like just being a woman yeah like there are things we don't have to explain to each other yeah yes so I do feel like there would probably be some sort of and I haven't seriously dated anyone that has divorced parents so maybe I should <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know if that's parents. A, maybe maybe like you need someone that's like a little more like positive about the situation <laughs> so both of you aren't like fuck it like <laughs> let's just <laughs> but I feel like people like children of divorce go one way or the other mm-hmm. it's like oh, I saw this happen and so now I'm scared of marriage and don't think it can work out. Or like, oh, I am determined to be the opposite of what yeah. happened to me. So like I'm going to have this family unit or whatever. Um, and I find that most of the time with most of my friends that have divorced parents, it goes that way. It's the way that's like, I'm not going to be like my parent. I'm right. not going to be like, you know, what they were like. Like I have yeah. so many friends that have divorced parents that are um, engaged now. Like I can think of multiple that are engaged right now at my age. So yeah kind of has nothing to do with that but it's all about how badly like you want to be like the change and how you can like go for someone you believe is like good for you I think it just makes me more like like that's why I feel like I've waited longer Mm -hmm. to even be like I'm ready for marriage yeah like in my last relationship I think it was mostly because of the show but like Mm -hmm. people were like are you ready to be engaged like do you wish that he proposed like interesting do you are you and I felt really caught off guard by that question because I was like is that a normal thing to ask people when they've only been dating for like a year? No, but it's because of what the child. Yeah. I was like, that's a little quick, but then also I think it was because I'm in my thirties. Yeah. And that's interesting because it shouldn't, it really like this timeline should still be, I get it because with a lot of women and with men too, the older you get, like the quicker, you know, you've been through more, you just, you know, faster. Right. But I think there's also the element of it being the show and, and, people just wanting to like yeah to see the end result because to them it's a storyline yeah but nobody asked me that when I was like with someone for four years when mm-hmm. I was 26 right so I'm like it's just because I'm 30 <laughs> which is which is insane yeah. by the way because and also this is a side note but I've been thinking about this so much lately so many people that we know that I feel like are really strong beautiful women haven't met their person until they're in their like early to mid thirties. Mm. It's, I see it so much. Think of how many like celebrities, how many influencers like we know or can yeah. think of that are str- any strong woman I can think of that is like successful. Didn't yeah. met their guy until later. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's just like you already have, like, I don't need, it's just, unless you're going to be an addition, right. obviously it's right. my life. Like, if I'm already making money, doing fine by myself, have like being fulfilled, mm-hmm. I have my friends, I have my career, like you're just not going to settle for less than what you want. So it's like, we're, we're fine. So yeah. I'm willing to wait. Yeah. For, for the right person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not going to settle be. for like any old thing. No. Um, and at that point, right. It's like, you've been through so much and like, I, I, even like with, I've been in one relationship, but I'm like, I know the hell that I like went through and like what you like. I don't know, just like the healing that goes after. You don't want to fuck it up. Like you want it to be the real thing right. in order to get into something. Yeah. How do you feel about living with a partner? I don't know. I've never lived with one. And I think like I would need to be with them for like probably a year or more until moving in with them. Yeah. But I don't know. What was that situation like for you? Like I've done it twice now. Oh, you've done it twice. Yeah. So my first serious relationship was from college. And uh, then. Oh, right. I remember you told me about yeah, this. Yeah. He moved here right after me, like after we graduated. We were together for five years. Mm-hmm. We lived together for like three. Um, I loved living together. Like people used to make fun of us because they would be like, why are you texting him? Like I would, <laughs> we would text all day, every day. And they're like, you live together. Yeah, what like, do you have to talk about? Yeah. Like he was my best friend. Like we were just yeah. ch- we were chatting. Right, you were roomies too. Yeah. Like, Yeah. I love living together. That's like not why we broke up. Mm-hmm. Um. And then the second time, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It was such a shit show. Um, ay, ay, ay. It was just like we were long distance. And so it just made sense for us to live together when he moved here. Right. So it was like he's not going to move across the country for me and then not move in with me. Did you both? I mean, I don't know if you know from his end, but did it feel like a forced situation where it was like, uh, we don't like really have any other choice. We kind of have to rush into this. No, I was just like so excited to not be long distance anymore. Like yeah. I think we were both just really excited to like close the distance gap, mm-hmm. not do this anymore and like be together. Um, yeah. But I mean, living together will really bring out 
your issues. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be magnified. Yeah. Um, so I feel like now I'm at the point where I'm like, I won't live with another man unless we're getting married. Yeah. Cause it's enough times now for you that I feel like you don't want to have to like put up with more of that. Yeah. Well, it's also just like, why do I need like a boyfriend in my space? We're not, it's unless true. you're paying the whole rent. Like, right. This, there's <laughs> no like, benefit in here for me. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the issues that came up with like your last relationship with living together? Like what, and do you think living together contributed to the breakup? Like, do you think it made it go faster? Like make the breakup happen faster? Um, it's hard to tell because living together was synonymous with like not being long distance anymore. Yeah. So like had he moved across the country, got his own apartment in New York. Yeah. Like how that, had that happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, we probably would have, we probably, it probably expedited things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was good. Like I needed, I, yeah. I needed it to expedite things because I was like, I need to see if this is, if we can work out these things that are issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and then quickly saw nah it's not gonna work yeah yeah why like did you feel like it wasn't gonna work out and how soon like when did it go I I feel like a lot of people in relationships relate to this when did it go from being a problem that you thought you could solve to like when was the oh shit moment of like oh shit like we probably are gonna break up or I think we're we might break up I don't know if there was an oh shit moment I think it was like mostly me for a lot of moments and a Mm -hmm. lot of months trying to convince myself that this was going to work. Like I was trying to fit this square peg into this round hole so hard. And then I finally got to the point where I was like, I I can't continue to do that. Mm. So it wasn't like a one thing or like an, Oh shit. Like it was just like, I knew in my gut, like in my heart of hearts between me, my therapist and my Mm -hmm. journal, we all knew (laughs) that like it was off. Yeah. And I just kept trying to make it work because I'm just so like, I just, I gotta see it through. You got to see it through. You always like, do though. I yeah. think that's every girl, every woman. Like we, and, and you can't, nobody was gonna just drop out and walk away. Like right. you have to. And that's why like, I feel like women get so, like, I, I don't know. Like when they're done, they're done. Cause yeah. it's like, I, I did everything I possibly could. Yeah. And I wanted to, to make sure so that I could feel good about like walking mm-hmm. away. So I was like, okay, I know that when I leave this, I really, I tried yeah. Like I tried my damnedest because yeah. I didn't want to leave and then be like, well, what if we just moved in together? Like, what if, what if, what if like this happened and this happened? Yeah. And I should have given it a little more time. Like, no. Yeah. I just think it came down to me choosing like my self, mm-hmm. like my peace and what I felt like I wanted, needed and deserved yeah. over like just being in a relationship. Like I was very much in love with him when I broke up with him. So like that just fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just a horrible, I, I would argue that being that person is worse than Mm, getting broken up with. mm -hmm. What was his reaction to the breakup? Did he know things were bad and it was coming and was there a part of it that was mutual or was it you putting your foot down being like, this cannot go on any longer? It wasn't a shock. Like we had had a lot of conversations yeah. about things over many months that I, he knew mm-hmm. there were like a couple main issues mm-hmm. that we were working on and that he knew about. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We had one thing about us. We were very good at communicating. Okay. Um, right. yeah. So like, it wasn't a shock to anyone. I don't think. Right. It was just kind of a, like, I've reached the point where I was like, I got to call it. Yeah. Yeah. And healing, like coming out of that, what were like the first things, like what were the motions that you went through when you first came out of it? And also, did you cut contact right away? Um, I think because I've been through, this is like my third breakup that mm-hmm. was like serious. Yeah. And so I was like, part of it was like easier. Mm-hmm. Almost. Like you knew the motions that you were going to go through before they happened, kind of. Like. Maybe, but it's like different with every different like love. Of I course, like. yeah. I don't know. I think this time I actually allowed myself to feel everything. Mm. Like I let myself sit in the emotions and like cry if I needed to cry, mm-hmm. like rot my couch if I needed to. Like yeah. whatever I needed to do, I let myself do it. And before I'd never done that. Like yeah. I was a girl that was running away from all my feelings mm. and like afraid to do anything, whatever. So I was like that I think made me heal faster because I really let myself like 
feel it. Yeah. For a couple of weeks. I went to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I bought myself some nice stuff. I cried it out. Um, Got it. Yeah. And then I felt better a lot quicker. And I was like very surprised by that. Yeah. Um, because that's like a, not an easy thing to do. It's not. And a lot of men, I think, especially struggle with that. Not feeling the emotions in the beginning. And then later on, they end up having all these issues right. because they don't even realize they never let it out. Right. But it is so much easier to get through any hardship in your life when in the beginning it's easier said than done. But when in right. the beginning you are able to feel your emotions and process your emotions yeah. and then move forward. Yeah. You got to like really be brave and <laughs> yeah. let it destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the contact situation, um, because it was like a not a nice breakup, but <laughs> cordial. <laughs> because we like both still cared about each other a lot at the time. Mm -hmm. Um we were still like talking, like we were still nice to each other. But then it got to a point where it was like we can't we can't keep chit chatting. It makes it ten times harder yeah. when you're like friendly. Yeah, no. I was like, Oh my god, I've never had a friendly breakup before. Oof, like yeah. this is so nice. Like, it's we don't have to hate each other. <laughs> and then I was like, Okay. And then we got into like a stupid, like petty little like argument and I was like, I think we needed this so that we had an excuse to stop talking. Yeah. yeah. Cause it always comes up. Yeah. Like there's, I've been there, done that yeah. with like having a friend, Pretty having nice. a bestie. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, we can just be best friends. But there's like always someone that like has feelings. And then there's always an argument. Yeah. Or I, multiple. I've just never had that happen before. All yeah. my other breakups have been like, like blow up. Yeah. That's like the norm. Yeah. It's, I might, it's almost harder, I think, when you're, like, being friendly. It is. Yeah. What's your advice to someone that, like, is going through the beginning stages of a breakup right now? Um, and what's your advice about, like, cutting contact? Like, what's the easiest way to do it? Are you blocking people? Are you muting people? Like, Ooh. what's the situation? Okay, mute is, like, a, a must. Like, at the bare minimum. Yeah. You've got to mute. Yeah. Because out of sight, out of mind, really, mm -hmm. is, like, a true thing. Mm -hmm. And in this world that we live in, like, it's not like our parents, when they broke up, they didn't have to see anybody. Yeah. Like, if you're stalking their stuff, like, you're only hurting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. Don't do that. It's self-harm. <laughs> yeah, please. Mute at the bare minimum. Block is nice. Mm -hmm. But I almost feel like block's, like, I used to think block was, like, dramatic. Like, I didn't want the guy to think that it was so important to me to block right. them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... Block is like a form of self-care. Honestly. Yeah, it is. It is. Sometimes you got to do you gotta it. You got to block. Um, yeah. I would recommend blocking. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. oh, it was like, oh, okay. What? It was like blurry, but I, oh. maybe it was like going in and out of focus. Yeah, probably. It's stupid camera. Um, I'll stop moving my hands so much. It's probably <laughs> um, yeah. Step one, block, mute, social media. Mm -hmm. Step two, I've never like really deleted people's contacts from my phone, mm. but if you feel like that's helpful for you go off I've done that I haven't you know when it's really over for me hmm. when I delete your text message the thread that oh see that's the first step for me usually oh yeah like it, keep in mind though like I've haven't been in a serious relationship in a very long time but when it comes to guys that I'm dating if like something's over like I'm deleting the text message that's the first thing I'm doing oh, before wow. like Instagram before anything else like I'm deleting the thread of text I don't want to see it wow it reminds me it gives me like an icky feeling okay mine I can't I well let's start with this I am a text hoarder like I have text threads yeah, from too, like college like 2012 <laughs> yeah we all have those like um so like I don't delete text messages so if I delete your text mm, that's some serious you're dead to me you're dead yeah, you're dead <laughs> um do I still have my ex's text thread yeah mm. I haven't made it to delete status yet yeah but we're we don't follow each other anymore we I muted okay um I do have to see him soon at a mutual friends thing oh shit yeah so that what's that good situation gonna be I don't know I actually have no idea how he's gonna act towards me I feel like most likely you guys will end up being like friendly like hi hi like I mean I'll I will I would rather get it out of the way because I feel like it's so uncomfy yeah and I hate to be in a room where like I know I feel like you have to get attention so I would like go up and say hi give him a hug yeah and, like be like okay yeah that's out of the way yeah I don't know how he's going to um be towards me but TV. what is it like a wedding mm -hmm. like it's a wedding yeah <laughs> yeah you got to get it out of the way in the beginning <laughs> and then I'm like fuck what if he shows up with a date oof well I don't have a date <laughs> you can't you could I, I can you have a lot I have you, like you have a roster <laughs> yeah you you have a roster you could you could come up with a date if you needed to yeah okay back to my breakup advice yeah 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 um I found breakup tiktok so helpful mm. like there 
you don't have to like reinvent the wheel here. Yeah. There's been a lot of people that have gotten dumped or like have broken up with someone and they all have posted about it on TikTok and that made me feel a lot better. It's true. Yeah. Like just listening to their stories or like seeing like this was me six months ago and now I feel good and this mm-hmm. is what I did. Like love that. Yeah. Um, what else? I'm like, you got to feel the feels. Like That's you, so you really got to do it. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, everyone knows no contact is the best way to go, but nobody wants to do it. I know. No one wants to do <laughs> it. But then once you do, it is the best thing. Yeah. Like, or there's something eventually that forces you to be no contact. Right. But yeah. So when it comes to now, like your new, your new when era, of Chelsea, <laughs> which I am obsessed with. Um, first of all, you started this podcast, which is yeah. amazing with cash. Yes. Um, what is she from? Um, she's a Love Island girl, yeah. which is my, by the way, sorry, Bachelor, but <laughs> Love Island is my shit. <laughs> no, Love Island is my shit too. No, it's so good. I'm like, I, I knew who she was for so long. I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with her. Love. Um, but you guys started on the sidewalk together. Yes. Tell everyone about like what, what are you talking about? What are like the vibes of the podcast? Yes. Okay. So the podcast is called On the Sidewalk. Which I love. And it's like a play on words of something that Cash said on my old podcast. Um, she was like, I'm not like in the streets. Oh, I heard, I saw her say this. But yeah. I'm on the sidewalk. Like she's like, I'm not like in the house. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not on the porch. Like I'm on the sidewalk. Like I'm street adjacent. Yeah. Um, and then like it blew up and it got viral and it was so funny. And people so were good. like, guys in the comments were like, the sidewalks are property of the streets. You're for the streets. <laughs> <laughs> We're all for the streets then. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a dating and relationships podcast. So we both consider ourselves on the sidewalk right now currently. Period. You know, like I'm dating. I'm looking around. Yeah. Like she's like, I might fall into the streets on accident. <laughs> but I always make my way back home to the sidewalk. That's um, so funny. But yeah, we are just talking about like relationships are like it's like very big sis yeah we give advice every episode yeah um we have people write in and, and we give advice mm-hmm. and um I mean we were talking about like our current dates like we made a pact on the podcast to be like okay we're gonna date this yeah. month and then we talked about our dates so it was very like I've never I've never publicly talked about dating so that was new for me yeah um it's fun to like spill the tea about it is like, fun I, dudes. I did that on my last podcast like yeah. a lot and it is fun I go through phases with it yeah. where it's like it depends who you're dating. And I still do that to this day on the podcast. Like if I'm if I'm just for funsies dating, then you talk about it. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Because it's like, yeah. where's the line? Because then the guys that's that the met line. me, they were like, wait, you have a podcast? What's Are you going to talk about I'm me? like dating. And they're like, did you talk about me? I'm like, hmm? <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> no, literally, it's the way that like when I first started the podcast, I went on a date with this guy. And he was like, wait, like, are you going to talk about me? Like, no, like, no. I don't talk about that stuff in the podcast. Like, I like don't like to bring like my dating life into it. Cut to my most like viral and like one of my most listened episodes is a story about this man Yikes. because of what happened. Like I was like, I didn't intend for it to be this way, but you did some weird shit. So <laughs> <laughs> you exposed yourself to this. Like this is your fault. Sorry. Yeah. Like I'm like, this is a, this is an inside joke with me and all my That's listeners so at this point. No, I think like if I actually had feelings for someone, I wouldn't talk about them. Yeah. That's where the line is. Yeah. But I feel like talking about like, anecdotes mm-hmm. like funny things that happened on a date in the past exactly or like a guy a one-off like one first date that's fine that's fun to like chit chat about yeah um yeah but that that part is really weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah have you ever talked about or do you know about this like whole like there's been so many conversations on social media about women like a man making you into your most like feminine self yeah. or like be in touch with your feminine. Yeah. Like what's your like perspective on that? And like, how do you know, like how do you know if a guy is like making you get in touch with that? I think, I don't think I've ever dated anyone that like allowed me to be in my feminine in that way. Yeah. And I really want that. Mm-hmm. Like I think the way you do it, I guess, is like the man is supposed to like lead. Yeah. By being in his masculine. Yeah. And so then it's like your natural state with that kind of person would be for you to be in your feminine. Right. And I've never dated anyone like that. Me too, honestly. Yeah. I'm just like, I think it's a very like, it's a safety thing. Mm-hmm. Like I would have to feel safe enough for you to like open up that side of me. Yeah. Because I'm like a very soft like. I don't know. I don't know what to call myself. Like I can be like that kind of girl in a relationship. Yeah. If you give me the space to be. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times that's not what happens. Especially when you're like an independent like boss lady, Mm -hmm. you know, like in charge of things in like your work life and your career and like 
you know, it's just it's very hard to get out of that like mode. Um, so it's interesting. I I guess I'll let you know if I meet any man that makes me feel, feel that, that way. way. Yeah. yeah. No, I I it's very interesting because I just he- keep hearing people talk about this and this is like I've been trying to say this all along to people I'm like I want a guy that is dominant Mm -hmm. and I guess that's what I'm trying to say like I want a guy that makes me feel like I can I don't always have to be on right like I don't always have to like I can like I don't know and especially I grew up like I don't know how your dad is or what your relationship is like but I grew up with a father that was very like dominant with our family and always took over everything and so I think that's why I tend to gravitate towards men like that like I look for that more right because I want a I want to be like the nurturing more like feminine one right whereas like the other person like kind of takes over and leads the way kind of yeah no it's like a leader yeah like that's a specific certain kind of man Mm -hmm. and I don't think a lot of guys are naturally like that yeah I think yeah it's like a, it's it's got to be an innate thing in you mm-hmm. it's not like a you get with someone and then you're like okay like I want you to like it's like <laughs> have you seen the breakup what with the- Jennifer Aniston oh yeah of course okay and she's like I don't I want you to want to do the dishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so it's true. Like that. It's like, I want you to want to buy me flowers. Like, I right. want you to want to lead, like, this thing. Like, right. I want you to think of things on your own and me not have to, like, micromanage and tell you everything. Yeah. Because it, like, it puts you in a different state. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're with that kind of person, you have to be the person that's, like, in charge of everything, thinking of everything, whatever. Mm-hmm. And what it reminds me of, like, I've seen a lot of conversations about this, too, on mm-hmm. online, um, is the girls that are, like, Oh, I get to turn my brain off when my husband's around. Like, I feel like that is peak being in your feminine energy. It is. I always think that way. And I'm like, it's because you can still be a boss bitch. Like, I think guys especially get so confused with this. They like will attack women online. But it's like, no, like you actually are just like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like you can be a boss, but also at home be like in your feminine. Right. And they can coexist pe- because of how like the patriarchy is they people think it can't coexist but it can we can be both yeah it's like you feel safe enough with your husband Mm -hmm. to allow him to lead you yeah like you trust it's a trust thing yeah like I I trust this person to lead me Mm -hmm. whereas like when I'm out in the world Mm -hmm. I have to be the more masculine energy version of myself yeah yeah so I'm like, that's that's goals for me. What I'm yeah. looking for in a guy is someone who lets me turn my brain off. Yeah, same. So I don't get to do that anywhere else in life. Literally, especially with us, like, I feel like we travel so much. We, we like, run our days and we're always navigating. Like, right. it's our brain is always on with that. And it's so nice to just be able to have someone lead you finally. And, yeah, like, no. be taken care of in that way. Yeah, and I haven't had that. Yeah. So I feel like that's, like, that's, that's when I know I'm like, okay, that's my husband. What are some other things that you look for? And obviously I know in this phase in your life, you're maybe not like being precise or specific, but if you had to build, like if you wrote a list of like specific things that you are really like must have, like even just like values, like things like that, what are some things that you like look for? I actually have been wanting to physically write a list because I feel like I've heard you do. Yeah, I have. Okay. I feel like I've heard that people like, they're like, when I did that, it's like I manifested it into the world, which I'm like, you guys are crazy for that. (laughs) I'm like, I wrote mine. (laughs) Where is he? Where is he? (laughs) I just did this though. Like a few weeks ago. Okay. Or like a month ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. So no, there, I think there's something powerful about like, like pen to paper, like really writing things Mm -hmm. down. Um, I feel like I would write, I mean, if I'm going to write a list, I'm going to shoot for the stars. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Like, I'm going to write my whole type, probably. Yeah. But, like, obviously, there can be some flexibility in that. Yeah. If I want a guy to be 6'5", he can be 6'2". Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, maybe 6'3", 6'4". No, but, like, personality-wise, like, I feel like I just want someone that has, like, a generous and, like, kind mindset. Like, that's natural to them. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need anyone or any man to provide things for me, but Mm -hmm. I want the guy to want to do that. Yeah. For me. Yeah. You know? Of Um, course. And I want someone that's, like, a true partner. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to feel like we're really in this together. Yeah, like, you're an actual team. Yes. Like, you can make decisions together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be anyone's mom. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take care of anyone. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, I don't want that. So I'm just like, I want a true partner. I want a grown up. Like I want to, it's grown man energy. Yeah. That's, oof. So you need hot. that, especially after 
everything. Like, you're, after everything you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to make it sound like that. but <laughs> No, like, just after being in, like other relationships you want to finally be able to put your feet up for a minute and be like totally take care of me like we got this together I don't need to take care of you all the time yeah I think what it like boils down to is like I want to be impressed by this man yeah like I feel like it sounds weird to say like in awe of Mm -hmm. or like admire like I want to look up to my partner not in like a look up to my dad kind of way like not like that no it's true but like I want to I don't think I've ever dated someone where I was just like, wow, I'm just like genuinely in awe of like who you are as a human. And like, I'm so impressed by what you do and mm-hmm. how you think. And like, you're, you're smarter than me. Like I want to date someone smart, like yeah, intelligent, witty, like can go back and forth with me. Yeah. Like I just, I don't know. I just want to be impressed by someone. Yeah. And that's hard to find. I think it's because you're impressive. <laughs> it's true. I'm not kidding. Like I, it's because you're impressive and you need someone that, can make you better and like you feel like you're being pushed because otherwise there's a lot of like there's a lot of like average people that are just like doing normal everyday jobs and like whatever and that's fine but especially for someone like you that's you're out of the box you know like I feel like you're not doing like a typical job you're not living a typical life does that make sense yeah you need someone that is going to like be on that journey with you and like push you yeah to yeah, to Thanks. just make you better. Yeah, but that also comes with like its own, I feel like, set of challenges. It because is, Because then yeah. there's like the guys that are intimidated, want to compete with you, mm. are secretly trying to like bring you down even when you're in the relationship with them. That's, yeah. And it's like, we're su- you're supposed to be my teammate. Like, we're, right. if I'm winning, you're winning. Like, yeah. why are you competing? Like, why are you mad that I'm getting things that are better than things? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't want that energy at all. Um, yeah. And I think I... I want someone that wants to be like, okay, funny also. I need, I need you to be funny. Please. Yes, totally. Um, and just like a playful spirit. Like I love a guy that's like down for whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I want to like be a silly little like kid version of myself yeah. when we're together. Yeah. Like I love relationships that are the perfect balance of serious and we giggle on the couch all day, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I've been paying very close attention lately to like how I act when I'm with someone. Because for so many years, I was like, uh, I would be obsessed with certain guys. But then I realized I was kind of being blah around them. Like I wasn't even like, I felt like I couldn't be my like, I'm like crazy. Like I'm like very silly, very out there and outgoing and sometimes obnoxious. And like a guy that like doesn't care. Like I even, I even met someone this past weekend where I was like, oh, I like I'm being so fucking weird and out there around him. And like, I don't really care. Right. Like it's almost like a, uh, it's like second nature. It's like a subconscious thing. Like you want to feel like you can just be silly around them. Oh yeah. Like if you can feel like you can be your full, true, weird ass Mm -hmm. self around somebody, that's like key. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's paying attention to like how you feel around them. What else is on your list? On mine? Yeah. Oh, should I whip it out? Oh my God. It's on the notes app? Yeah. It's in the notes app. Oh no. I need to write mine down by hand. That's that's how you find them. You need to write yours down. So I have, I have a, a regular list too. Okay. But wait, hold on. I did write down. I think I started one. I keep saying I'm going to do it. And then I'm like laying in bed and I'm like, ah! so <laughs> dream man. So I did a list and this isn't like for me to manifest or anything necessarily. It's just a reminder to come back to for myself. Um, wait, it's not very long. No, because it's like, again, like it's something for me to come back to like before a, or like after a date or like if I'm with someone for a long time and I'm trying to like decide like is if something he's doing is something he's doing like wrong or whatever like right. you can come da- back to it and say like does it align with right. like my my values and yeah. stuff so have just, you said this on the pod before your list no oh, okay. someone who makes me better someone who takes care of me someone who asserts themselves someone who shares my values wants to do life with me um share adventures with silly and fun driven loves me for me loves my family balances me out and just who is like a soulmate like a best friend that's really it nice so it's like you're, you're like that's not <laughs> like there it's like it's no, so just, cringe because it's, it's no because it's like you don't know depending on the person like some people are going to be like so specific yes I don't want that because I really truly I don't know what my soulmate like what my person is gonna be like I mean we don't we and don't know. and I always say um I want to marry someone Jewish like this that but like 
you just never know. And so nothing is ever all, like off limits completely to me. Yeah. So I feel like if I say, well, I want a guy with brown hair. Well, what if I meet a blonde guy? Right. You know? No, I think like physically any of that to me is like interchangeable. Yeah. Like the most important things on the list are obviously the ones that aren't physical. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's just like kind of, it is general, but it's like the most important things to me. Right. The qualities. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Would you ever do long distance again? I would really prefer not to. <laughs> I feel like my main love language is quality time. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't, it was hard. That's interesting that your love language is quality time and like you had the long distance situation going on. Well, that was just a situation that would have never happened in real life. Like it just happened yeah. to happen that way. Yeah. Um, but I think, like I said, our communication was top notch. And I honestly don't think we would have been able to make it through the long distance without him. Like he was very on top of the, on the communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like without that, like him being so like no, it's going to be fine. No, mm-hmm. we can keep going. Like, I think I would have probably tapped out at the long distance. Yeah. Like, I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. And he was just so sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So now in like the place that you're in, I also want to come back to like what I said in the beginning because like, oh wait, can I say one more thing about the list? Yeah, please, <laughs> please. I wrote a list uh-huh. years ago uh-huh. and my ex-boyfriend was everything on the list. Interesting. I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm telling you, make your list as specific uh, as you. Specific. I just didn't write down a certain thing. I'll tell you after. Okay. I didn't write down a certain thing that has never come up in my relationships before. Uh huh. And then I realized it was important to me. Huh. So it was like the more relationships experience you have. Now I'm like, okay, I could nail this list. Yeah. But before I didn't realize how important something was to me. Yeah, it Until is. Until I didn't have it. He, like, do I need to write on my list? Like, doesn't have, like, mental health problems. <laughs> I'm like, one of us has to be sane. Like, does it need to be that specific? Maybe. <laughs> my mom always says that to me. She's like, Carly, whatever you do, make sure you ask them, what do you got going on? In there? Are you in therapy? Have you ever been on medication? What's your family history like? <laughs> You're like, there can only be one. Yeah, there can only be one, and it's me. That's so funny. Because... I'm on a fixer, so <laughs> it's only got to be one of us. <laughs> okay, sorry. What were you going to ask about um, in the beginning? Sorry. Oh, no, I don't know. I, I just feel like this vibe, like your era lately has been super, I don't know. I feel like you have this new sense of like empowerment and how have you like stepped into that? Mm. I don't know. I And maybe it's just the post breakup glow, but I just feel like you've been extremely like confident and like sure of yourself, even just the way you present yourself. I don't know. I feel like there's a new kind of era and like, thank you. I don't know. I'm honored that you can see it. Do you feel it? (laughs) Like I, I did feel a shift. Like I wouldn't say beginning of the year, maybe like February, Mm -hmm. March. Yeah. Um, I think it was like, I needed to get out of, well, I was in Atlanta for a bit with my family. Uh I needed to like get out of that, come back to New York and like start fresh. Yeah. So I feel like changing my environment, getting a new place, Mm. having a new neighborhood. Yeah. Like all of that is bringing in new, new energy. And I also feel like refreshed creatively. Yeah. Like I've been pumping out way more content than I had ever recently, like in the past couple of years as Mm -hmm. an influencer. Like, yeah. And I felt like I just have creative ideas flowing a lot more. Mm. I just feel more inspired. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's just a shift in I can something. see it. And I'm sure everyone else can too. But like I really, just especially like I've known you for like a while now compared to like a lot of other social media people. And yeah. I, you can just tell when there's a shift with someone or um, when their content like becomes more like, I don't know, you're right. Like you have been posting more and it just, it shows. It yeah. sh- it's really oh, cool thanks. to watch and it shows. Um, I mean, I've been working... I, I have a therapist, but like yeah. I had been working with her for years now, mm-hmm. like since post show. Mm-hmm. Um, so like uh, constantly that's part of working on myself. Yeah. Yeah. But I think now it's more of me trying to go back to like what made me happy when I was younger. Mm. It's funny because they say like the older you get, the more you try to like go back to what you did as a child. So true. So now it's like, I'm like, what did I used to be so creative? I used to draw. I used to play soccer. I used to like 
do all these things and I'm like what do I do now like when people ask like what are your hobbies I'm like what do I have to say yeah besides taking pictures of myself yeah <laughs> like, no which is work <laughs> <laughs> it, it is but. but a hobby I guess I've always loved pictures so mm-hmm. fine but I'm like I started taking like Spanish lessons with a teacher oh my god I was like oh I really want to be bilingual like I've been saying I want to learn Spanish for years mm-hmm. so like I'm trying to actually knock things off of my list that I've kept saying I wanted to do mm-hmm. like th- that's like how I'm trying to be more true to myself yeah recently it is crazy because like a while ago we did a podcast episode on our old podcast with Hannah Burner and she said the same exact thing like you as you get older you just want to be like your younger self like we were so I don't know like wide-eyed and like the world was our oyster and then as you get older people try to make you smaller or things make you smaller and then you just constantly are trying to get back to like what made you happy in the first place yeah it's kind of sad it it's is like the it more is. you grow up the world and the environment just beat it makes it out you of sad you. Yeah, yeah it does it does but that's what part of like mm. getting older is it's like always coming back always finding your kind of like north star like the thing that makes you tick or the thing that like guides you the most yeah. so what's making you tick right now? Like what is, what are you super passionate about? What's like making you get up in the morning right now? <laughs> I struggle to get up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Cause I was literally just talking to my best friend about this. Cause I was like, this is like, that was like kind of a joke, but mm-hmm. not really. Like I have been struggling to leave my apartment mm. and I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm like, is it, is it, is this anxiety? Like, am I, do I have ADHD? Like, is this agoraphobia? Like what is going on? No, it's not agoraphobia. (laughs) I'm like, we all have that because we're, we work from home. But I'm like, why can't, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be like, okay, I need to go out there today. I need to like, it looks so nice out. It's sunny. Like I should go for at least a walk. Yeah. And I can't manage to make myself leave my apartment. Mm Mm-hmm sometimes and it's like actually frustrating and I also can't be on time for anything because it's like I wait to the last second yeah to do stuff and I'm like that's very frustrating to me and it's annoying Mm because I don't want to be the late girl but Mm -hmm. I'm literally always late to everything yeah I'm always late too don't worry and I can't leave my apartment unless I actually have something I have to do right me too I'm the same so I'm like is this executive dysfunction disorder or whatever it's called literally why have I been on that side of TikTok and I'm like fuck I have this I have this I'm like, I have this. And I, it, apparently it's like a, a symptom of ADHD. Yeah, I literally have. I, I like can't do ADHD medications. Like I can't take stimulants because when I was younger, I was on them and I like had major issues with them. They like, made me feel horrible. I overtook them, blah, blah, blah. But I have an appointment with an ADHD, like with the doctor about ADHD to see what other options are aside from oh, stimulants because okay. I'm like, I can't function. I just so like, feel you. A lot of people I feel like are getting diagnosed in their thirties of having ADHD. Yeah. And I'm like, am I just like on TikTok too much or do I really probably have, some, somewhat have, or is it just like, because we're on our phones and social media, like I just have the attention span. That's and like, what it is. The fucking phones melting our brains. Yeah. Cause so I, 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 my apartment. I just spoke to the doctor about it and she said that she was like, you've no idea how many people come to me. And she's like, the, it's spiked so much because we're in the TikTok age. We're in a social media age. People don't have attention spans. Like the, the number of adults getting diagnosed with ADHD, like, skyrocketed and it's because of all those things it's not because all of us were like born with it right so but it's crazy because we all are genuinely feeling those symptoms yeah like I have them too weird like block yeah it's uh, a mental block for sure but I'm really curious maybe I should have someone like this on the podcast like I'm so curious about what we can do yeah to manage like symptoms like that because it's it's debilitating. It is. That's a good word for it. Yeah. Um. Probably put the phone down. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's a it's a literal actual addiction. Yeah. It and is. our brains. And then now it's our it's our job. Mm-hmm. So like as much as I would love to like somebody asked me in a Q and A recently like oh do you want to just like take a break sometimes but you can't because of work and I was like yeah girl. yeah yes. yeah <laughs> I really really want to yeah um yeah so. I forgot what you asked. Sorry. No, it's fine. Fa- actually, it's funny because a lot of the time I'll like ask guests like what you're struggling with lately or what's like something that oh, you're you struggling asked- with. And so that's a good one, that's honestly. What I- you asked me what, what um, what's so what, what's something that you're working towards. That's yes. like a better way to like ask okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you asked me what was helping me get up in the morning. I'm yeah. like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I can't. I'm like, I can't. And I'm like, that's fucking relatable. <laughs> that's real. And that's on coming on real with Carly Weinstein. <laughs> Yeah, that was a real that was bit. that was a real moment. Um, something that's like lighting me up right now. Yeah, I do enjoy podcasting. Um, obviously we're going through like a transition situation. Yeah, yeah. But I do love doing that, and I think it's fun. And it's kind of like 
I guess I would call it like kind of like a hobby. Yeah. Because I'm not like so I'm making bank on the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly just Takes a minute. Right yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just feel like career wise, then this could be me being hard on myself because I'm very hard on myself mm-hmm. always. I get it. But I just feel like I've plateaued a little bit. Mm hmm. And I'm really like trying to like get over this hump, I feel like. And I, I feel like I'm getting closer to being like out yeah. of there. Yeah. Like I just feel like I was stuck in this box of like what I had to be for right. the show. Mm-hmm. And then like after that, it was just, I don't know. I don't know if I need like a new team or like a new something, new yeah. management, new like a new opportunity to just like point me in the right direction. Yeah. But I feel like I'm just like at a phase where I'm just ready to move on somewhere and I don't know where that's going to be. I think a lot of the time it's throwing a bunch of random shit at a wall and seeing what sticks, especially in social media, but just in life in general, like it's a lot of trial and error. And I think with podcasting, with even think of me, like I'm on my, this is my third podcast. um, And something finally stuck where I'm like, I feel like I have a purpose. Like I feel like I have a direction, but even with me, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just think it's like you just keep trying different things and not being afraid which I know you're not like yeah. just like keeping trying like everything you possibly can think of and yeah just not fearing like failure or anything just doing it to do it because yeah. eventually something. something sticks yeah eventually it does yeah and um I think I don't know I usually I I'm not afraid of stuff usually yeah like putting myself out there yeah, exactly. I usually don't have a problem with that right but <laughs> there was this one like team that I mm-hmm. really want to like be a part of and mm-hmm. like work with mm-hmm. um they're like a creator management group or whatever mm-hmm. and I was so scared to like send that email like I was so terrified to reach out because I was just like I really want this one specifically so I'm like if they say no then I'm gonna be like fuck like crushed yeah. so then I was like dragging my feet dragging my feet dragging my feet and then I kept getting all these damn signs that were just like Hey, that one thing that you're waiting on doing, do it right now. Do oh it today. Like, okay. and you're like, fuck, fine. They're in my phone. So I finally sent the email last week. Good. Yes. So here's hoping. Yes. <laughs> and if not, like everything always leads you in the right direction. Like even something that doesn't happen, it's leading you closer Very to the right thing. It's a good mindset yeah. to have. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, for spreading your wisdom. Thank you for having and me. And your funny stories and everything. <laughs> um, tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah. So my podcast is on the sidewalk and you can find us on Instagram and YouTube to watch full episodes. And then for me, I'm Chelsea Vaughn on Insta and YouTube. I'm trying to get more into like YouTube blogs. I know. I love this era for you. I'm really jealous. I need to. And TikTok, of course. I'm Chelsea Vaughn underscore. Amazing. Um, You guys can follow my podcast at Real with CW on Instagram and Real with Carly Weinstein on TikTok. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube and give this a five-star rating and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we love you and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. What a wonderful